I've had a call from a tech over at a garage in Wrexham with an EGR flow issue on a PX7 DAF LF engine. I've told him to check the ports in the manifold for the EGR cooler pressure sensor, but with him still getting an engine warning on the road test, we're going to go and get our hands dirty. It's a bit dark in here today, so apologies for the poor engine warning on the dip. As always, we'll get plugged into this and see what we have going on. Big thanks to Eclipse for supplying this gel test unit to me and you can check out more about purchasing your own gel test over at trucktechuk forward slash gel test. As always, auto VIN identification and main system scan reveals our fault which is differential pressure sensor issues. Now the data is valid but above normal operating range, usually it's low flow but I'm attributing this to me telling him to clean the EGR Venturi ports out and the boost pressure sensor already. We also have a DTC for engine protection. As you can see, the component involved in this is the EGR pressure sensor and Geltest has a test plan for this for you to follow. We'll be checking the condition of the EGR pressure sensor, the condition of the EGR pressure sensor ports at the Venturi and how blocked the EGR cooler is and we will turn our attention to the inlet manifold and check the inlet where the grid heater would be mounted and we can go from there. But first, I want to know what sort of pressure we're dealing with in the EGR circuit. I'm expecting a high millibar reading on the pressure sensor for this. We can check these through measurements on gel test and with a few measurements selected such as EGR valve position and engine RPM, we can see what we're dealing with. With this pulling 26 millibar at idle and me remembering I'd not cleared the faults, engine protection mode is most probably disabling the EGR valve, so we're not going to get a known bad flow reading to compare this to later, so we will just get into this visually. So I best fire the cab over and see what we're dealing with. This engine on Euro 6 for the LF came as PX5 which was a 4 cylinder engine and a PX7 which was the 6 cylinder engine. What we're going to concentrate on today is the EGR circuit. Now this is called a cold EGR as the cooler is before the EGR valve which is all the way over at the inlet manifold here. We're going to start with the EGR pressure sensor here. These sensors have two ports which measure the pressure drop across the EGR system and I will talk about how this can mess things up royally later. As you can see we've got a cracked pressure sensor here probably from over tightening. Now these ports tend to block up with soot and throw the measurements out which then has a knock on effect with the soot levels. Things aren't looking too good here, so we best do some more digging. We will just pull this EGR valve off and check the manifold. I've lost count how many EGR valve cleans I've done over the years, but trucks that have low speed or long PTO hours are very susceptible to EGR faults, just like this one. Well, this isn't looking good. EGR valve looks like it needs cleaning. Let's get into the manifold and take a look. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we're going to have a good go at getting all this clean today. So, out comes the EGR cleaner and a small scraper. I'm going to do my best to agitate this soot out of the inlet. I can then use this shop vac to hoover the bits I've dug up out the manifold. Here is a quick before and after picture of where the grid heater would be. Now, to do the other part of the manifold, these Allen keys here need to be removed in order to correctly clean the ports out. So off we go again, more EGR cleaner and digging to clean this out. It's not 100%, but it's getting there. Now, the EGR valve and the pipework to clean out. 
I'll remove the electrical solenoid from this to allow me to press the valve down and not damage it. I will never forget a technician putting this whole EGR valve in the parts washer without taking it to bits. I suppose that's the difference in doing this the way Daff said to do it and just doing what you think is the right way. With the EGR valve now cleaned inside and out, we can reassemble this solenoid back onto the valve and have a look at the EGR cooler. We can pull the rest of this pipework off this cooler and pop my bore scope into the outlet to assess the flow issue. I have no idea how this has been working efficiently till now, so to get the EGR cooler off, I'm going to need to drop some of the coolant. Now, I've managed to drop the coolant, but tightening the drain plug back up, it went from righty tighty to righty loosey, so I had to have a bath again to change the damn plug. I have a few bolts going on here, so I'm going to get organised. Looks like someone has lost a pry bar here once upon a time. So while I'm pulling this to bits, I'll explain how this situation can actually arise. Excess suck can clog the EGR system, contaminating it to the point that it cannot operate properly. This is often caused by exhaust gas flowing back into the EGR loop, which clogs up important points in the EGR system. Depending on where the constraints are in the EGR loop, first the EGR cooler becomes blocked, causing the EGR flow to diminish. The EGR flow value will be lower than expected. As the system reacts, the EGR valve will open more to compensate. When correction is no longer possible, a DTC for low flow is set. In most cases, this will result in suck buildup in the DPF filter. The second condition is with the EGR valve and the EGR Venturi. The soot clogs the pressure port openings in the EGR loop. The EGR pressure sensor uses the pressure ports to determine the correct value of EGR flow. When the EGR ports clog, the sensors measure a low EGR flow, where there is actually considerable EGR flow. The EGR valve begins to compensate by opening even more. In actuality, the EGR flow is more than the system perceives, resulting in increased clogging of the EGR loop and, as a result, increased suck buildup in the DPF again. EGR-related DTCs are often then saved. When this first started happening to the engines, DAF made various modifications to improve this situation, like removing the vehicle acceleration limiter, putting an increased temperature thermostat in the system, and increasing the idle speed. I think this was a recall, I can't quite remember now because it was years ago, but I'm sure someone will help me out in the comments. Anyway, back to it. With our various nuts, bolts and heat shields removed from the EGR cooler, I'd managed to snap the bolt holding the coolant pipe above the VTG actuator off, so it's something I'll need to extract later. Seeing as I'll be getting new gaskets and o-rings later, the bolt's something I can pick up when I pop into DAF for the gaskets. With the coolant pipe finally free from the cooler, we can slip this EGR cooler out from the brackets and go retrieve my socket and wobble drive that I threw down the back of the engine. With our cooler sent out for cleaning, it's come back looking brand new. If only it was exchanged, as I wouldn't have had to get the bolt out that I snapped off. A quick cut with my angle grinder meant I could get a screwdriver in this bolt, and a touch of heat helped it out. With all my cleaned parts and new gaskets ready for assembly, I made the right decision to hyperlapse this footage. With the EGR Venturi on, I could get the EGR valve and pipework fitted and the cooler and gasket sorted also. As you can see, all new and clean now. With the cab down, we can get the coolant I dropped back in the engine and run through some basic checks while this warms up.
we best jump on Jaltest to see if we can get some known good data out of it. So, auto identification for the VIN and straight into ECS DC6, into my measurements and EGR flow again with RPM. So you can see what's going on. We will give this some revs now and see what the EGR valve position is doing. As far as I'm concerned, the lower the delta pressure reading, the better. Hopefully JAL test can incorporate some known good data in the future on measurements such as these, instead of having to just reference videos. To finish this off, we're going to regenerate the truck to ensure everything is back to normal roadworthy condition, such as soot load, and I can check the EGR cooler for leaks. I find LFs like to drop the water level after about 20 minutes, so I'd rather catch that here than down the road. I can also check it doesn't develop any DTCs, well it's here then. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This of course is now a thing of the past, now DAF have removed EGR from the engine as of this year and introduced throttle valve assemblies on the inlet and exhaust. I was lucky enough to catch up with this one at a body manufacturer I was doing some work at. As you can see, we have reverted back to a wastegated turbo, so goodbye VTG. And now NOx levels are fully managed by SCR with the new after treatment system and updated AdBlue injector. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, which is basically out with the old and in with the new. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.